Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. So I know it's been a really long time since my last haul video, so this one is uh, definitely well overdue. Yeah, life's just been really busy and hectic and there's just been a lot going on this year, including uh, an exciting thing, which was going to Europe for six weeks. So I only recently got back from Europe. Part of it was a long overdue European holiday. Uh, my husband and I hadn't been for over 16 years and we definitely owed it to some family members in Austria to go see them. So that was really nice to catch up with them. And uh, we also ended up going to Spain, which wasn't on my original European schedule, but uh, we ended up going so I could compete in the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship and I got to be in a pair with Vicky Makes and Builds and I got to be in a team with Vicky as well, Jeanette from Jeanette and Her Puzzles and Donna Louise from For the Love of Puzzles. So that was heaps of fun and it was so weird meeting each other because it felt like we'd known each other for so long even though we'd only just been chatting online. So it kind of felt like we'd, we're just doing a reunion. So yeah, I really loved it. And it was super exciting getting to meet lots of other puzzlers, including some of my lovely viewers, as well as people from Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, there were just so many people from the, around the world there. And yeah, it was just so great being able to sort of put names and faces together and just puzzle with lots of people that I never thought I'd be able to. So yeah, I really loved Spain. It was fantastic and I would absolutely love to do it again. Also, while I was in Europe, I traveled to Poland for the first time ever, and I got to visit the beautiful cities of Krakow and Gdansk. They're just so gorgeous. Definitely recommend going, just such beautiful places. Um, but while I was in Krakow, I actually ended up meeting up with one of my Instagram puzzle friends, the Jigsaw Journal. And so that was a lot of fun, getting to hang out for a day. Yeah, and he's actually gonna be coming to Australia next year, so that's exciting. Can't wait to hang out some more. So now that I've given you a bit of an update on what I've been up to, let's get back to talking about puzzles. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my September puzzle haul. However, this doesn't include any of the puzzles that I got while I was in Europe. Uh, turns out I got way more puzzles than I was expecting, especially while I was in Poland. Puzzles in Poland are really reason reasonably priced and I end up getting quite a lot um, and I was thinking of getting an extra suitcase, but it sort of ended up being a bit of a hassle. So my friend Jigsaw Journal helped me post a whole bunch home. Um, so I think at the moment they might be on a shipping container somewhere between Poland and Sydney and um, I have no idea when they're gonna show up. But whenever they do, I'll definitely be doing a haul or two, maybe two because we might need a part one and part two because there's quite a lot of puzzles, including ones that I got from the championships in Spain. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be sure to do a haul whenever they turn up. It could even be next year, so just be patient. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's check out all these September haul puzzles. So for today's haul video, I'm actually trying a bit of a different format in the hopes of cutting down my editing time. Um, so I've got the camera a bit closer to me today uh, so that when I pick up puzzle boxes and show them, hopefully you'll be able to see a lot of the details, which means I won't have to put an image on the screen for every single puzzle that I show. Uh, whereas when I used to do the hauls uh, mm, yonks ago, um, I was a lot further away from the camera and you couldn't really see the puzzle box clearly. So I would have to pretty much for every puzzle put in an extra image and that just took up a lot of time. It made editing very time consuming. So I'd be doing all these images as well as the video. And yeah, it meant trying to put out a whole video each month was just getting harder and harder. So I'm hoping that this will reduce the workload a bit and we can all have fun haul videos every month. So it's a bit of an experiment. Let's see how it goes, fingers crossed. So I've got a few stacks of puzzles here to go through today. So let's go through the first stack. So there's a bunch of puzzles here from the Brand Enjoy. And we actually only uh, kind of recently started getting the Brand Enjoy in Australia. So that's been pretty exciting. Um, so anyway, the first puzzle here is called Sweet Treats and it's definitely a me puzzle. It's very gorgeous and colorful and uh, I love all the sort of realistic, but sort of still kind of watercolor or painted uh, sweets and desserts and treats, they look really scrumptious. Definitely a puzzle that you probably shouldn't do when you're hungry. Um, but yeah, it definitely makes me think of like a birthday party or a very delightful afternoon tea. Yeah, really, really yummy looking and very uh, cheerful and yeah, just so bright and colorful. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll keep it for my birthday next year or, or I'll just do it when I, you know, when it's a gloomy day and you need cheering up, it could be a fun one to do. So yeah, really pretty, really, yeah, just really gorgeous and love all the colors and the 
very delicious looking desserts. And then the next four I've got here are all part of the same series, which is called Circle Gradient. And they're just called number one, number two, number three, number four. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, the previous puzzle was 1000 pieces and all of these are 1000 pieces each as well. So uh, most of you probably know I'm a bit of a gradient fiend, so you'll probably understand why I picked up uh, this set of puzzles. So I really love this one with the gorgeous like magentas and purples and yeah, really eye catching and bold and pretty. And yeah, all of them have these sort of rings or circles um, on it, on them. Um, they're all a little bit different. Like this one's in the center with like small circles or rings going out to larger ones. Um, but some have like a bit of a different placement, which you'll see shortly. Um, but yeah, I really love the colors in this one. And I really love that, you know, uh, each ring is sort of like got a bit of a purple to pink gradient and I love the pink background. But yeah, I think this one might be quite challenging and tricky and it might, uh, you know, mess around with my eyes a bit, I think. But, you know, I kind of can't resist, well, both a gradient and a bit of a challenge. So yeah, I think, uh, I think this is definitely a me puzzle and I think it'll be good fun. And so the next one, which is aptly named number two in the series, as you can see, the circle is off to one side. So I guess it's kind of like a half circle. Um, and yeah, I really love the colors of this one too. It kind of makes me think of sherbet or spring or summer with these sort of yellowy peachy pinks. Yeah, or, or like a sunset or sunrise actually. It's very pretty. Uh, so yeah, I think that one looks gorgeous as well. And again, will probably be equally as tricky as the last one. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm just guessing it's gonna be tricky looking at it, I think, yeah. I think it will be tricky and I always seem to underestimate how long things are going to take with puzzles and how tricky they actually are so I'm probably in for a bit of a shock with these so number three here is this gorgeous color palette of purples and blues very very pretty I just think all of these are really pretty actually and I think they would just all look stunning once they're all put together but yeah again you can see the circle or rings is in a different position so yeah they're all a little bit different but very pretty and then the last one, this one is very summery. This one's called number four. And this one kind of makes me think of like, uh, like in Australia, we have like Calippo icy poles, like, uh, you know, like iced, uh, like not ice cream, but yeah, ice, sweet ice. I don't know what you call them in other countries. We call them like icy poles, ice blocks, uh, that sort of thing. So it reminds me of those, the colors especially. Very summery, but yeah, I love the sort of limey, teals and yellows going on here really cool so yeah i think that's going to look really cool when it's done as well and again you can see the rings are in a different position too so yeah i think that's going to be a really fun set to do uh, let me know if you want to see a video on it maybe if i find time that could be a cool video project to do let's look at uh, another couple of puzzles we've got here um, so i've got a couple here from Eurographics. Uh, so these are 1000 pieces each as well this one's called funny mice and it's very adorable and actually a very uh, lovely friend of mine uh, kindly gifted me these puzzles so thank you to her uh, she knows who she is and yeah these are I just really love all the adorable little mice in this one uh, let's have a look we've got yeah like a bit of a grid of different I guess it's going to be like doing mini puzzles because we've got little blocks of mice images we've got one in a racing car <laughs> a cute one in an ice cream with a little cherry on top um, oh like a Mission Impossible style one with like getting the cheese um, I guess like soccer ones uh, yeah one bathing in a hot chocolate with marshmallows We've got another one as like Little Red Riding Hood yeah all sorts of really cute uh, images and I like the style it's like very nicely done kind of very sweet and realistic so yeah just very pretty so I think that's going to be a really adorable cute one to do and then the last one here from Eurographics don't worry not the last one of this haul just the last one of this stack um, this is an artwork by the Polish artist uh, let me see if I can get this right Tamara de Lempicka I think that's how you say it so that's a I've really enjoyed her artwork for many many years I think it's just a really unique beautiful style um, I forgot to say what the name of this one is Ooh, let's see um, 
oh, young girl in green. It says it right on the front. But yeah, I love the like sort of bold style, the strong lines. It's really dramatic and the colors and like lighting and shadows are just beautiful. And yeah, it's just such a unique style. And actually when I was staying in Krakow in Poland uh, recently when I was in Europe, the hotel I stayed in uh, was just filled with like prints of her artwork. So even in our room, we had like a lovely sort of printed canvas with one of her artworks. So yeah, it was really nice. Um, but yeah, I've wanted this one for a while. And so yeah, I'm really uh, grateful that my friend uh, really kindly gifted me this. So yeah, it's such a gorgeous image and definitely looking forward to it. So next up, I have three puzzles here from the brand Puzzle Love, and uh, these are all fairly recent designs from them. Um, and I just thought they were all stunning and gorgeous. Uh, this first one is 1000 pieces and I believe it's called uh, Pisiculus. <laughs> Hopefully that's how you say it. Um, but yeah, this one is a really lovely image, uh, like sort of stylized pictures of uh, fish tin packaging and some of them look a bit vintage retro. This isn't actually the whole image on the front and even on the back it's not the whole image I think this tiny one is here but there is actually a poster inside. So speaking of which let's have a quick look at the packaging actually because I think like these boxes are just really pretty and very aesthetically pleasing. Um, so yeah just very like very pretty to look at. Something you could definitely display um, and they kind of open with like a cool funky magnetic closure and then you've got your poster inside and like a little card of like other puzzles um, and then the puzzle pieces come in a zipper resealable canvas bag so yeah pretty nice very fancy um, anyway I guess yeah very pretty packaging which I quite like although I guess not really practical for 1000 pieces like I'll definitely be using other boxes or sorting trays when I end up doing this puzzle um, but still very pretty and I guess easy to store nice and compact um, anyway now that I've grabbed the poster out of there enough dilly dallying now let's have a see if this shows up okay on camera otherwise I will end up putting a image on the screen but yeah I really love the colors and I love the stylized sort of art style like the sort of pen work um, but even though it's stylized, it still manages to, manages to capture a lot of like interesting, cute little details like different fonts and like lovely little illustrations on the packaging. I don't know if these are based off real packaging or if some of them may, are made up. I'm not sure, but yeah, I still think it looks really cool and they're just really interesting and they say fun things on them and yeah, I really like it. It's kind of quirky and I quite like, as a graphic designer, I really sort of like uh, collections of packaging or posters and things like that like you see a lot of puzzles um, with like vintage travel posters that sort of thing I really like that and collections of things and yeah just like old advertising and packaging yeah I think it's really cool so I think that's gonna be a really fun one to do so definitely looking forward to it so let's pop that back in its box uh, so next from puzzle love as well is another 1000 piece puzzle this one's called a microfile which I looked that up and it sort of means someone who loves mushrooms or hunting for mushrooms. Um, yeah, anyway, so a bit of an interesting name, but yeah, a beautiful image. Again, this isn't the whole image. I'll show you the poster in a sec, but it is just really gorgeous. Again, beautiful packaging, very pretty. I think that's the whole image on the back, but anyway, let's take a look at the poster. Um, yeah, I love all the mushrooms in this one and the colors they're just really pretty lots of purples and some pastels and uh, yeah just all the different interesting shapes and designs and textures of them all the mushrooms look really cool it's sort of very collagey um, yeah just really pretty it kind of looks like a digital image as well the way the style in which it's done but yeah love it just love the colors and yeah all the patterns it's very busy but yeah really fun and I guess maybe I'm a bit of a microfile I don't know um, because this is actually uh, one of two mushroom puzzles that I'm showing you today and even in my collection I have like quite a few mushroom puzzles like unintentionally but I obviously really seem to like the look of mushrooms I just think they look really cool and um, yeah and just really they're just really intriguing and really interesting so yeah um, so next from Puzzle Love is a little 500 piece one called Metropolis and this one's really my style as well very colorful and also quite stylized with lots of line work 
Um, again, a very cute little aesthetically pleasing box. I think that's the whole image there, but let's take a look at the poster. So yeah, this is yeah definitely a me kind of puzzle. Very cool and just fun and quirky. Um, it's sort of like, I guess, just a room or someone's apartment or house. And um, yeah, love the color palette, like the sort of feels a bit 80s or something with like all the or even 70s as a disco ball, like all the interesting sort of shapes and colors and things going on. Yeah, it's sort of, it's bizarre. And there's even like a puzzle going on down here and some pizza and a cute little kitty cat um, and a quirky banana picture. Yeah, there's all sorts of like weird stuff, but yeah, I really like the sort of interesting perspectives in it. Um, yeah, the sort of interesting line work going on and sort of, it's like a very flat image, but then there's still sort of perspective or 3D elements, like the way it's drawn. Yeah, there's a lot going on, very detailed, but I think it's gonna be, yeah, really fun to do. And um, yeah, really like it, so <laughs> good fun. Next, I have a couple of puzzles here from the brand Wentworth. Um, so this one is only 250 pieces and it's called Tropical Fiesta and so um, a lot of you probably know but in case you don't Wentworth make beautiful wooden puzzles and all the puzzle pieces are like sort of uh, irregular piece shapes but then they also have like shaped pieces that usually have something to do with the image so this one's a bird image it's got these beautiful parrots in amongst this lovely magenta bougainvillea um, so it'll probably have lots of bird whimsy pieces in it, I'm guessing. I haven't actually opened it up. But yeah, I just saw this image and it was just, it really caught my eye. I love the vivid, beautiful colors, like the beautiful purpley magentas and the gorgeous like cobalt blue feathers of the parrots and the sort of little yellow highlights. And yeah, it's just really pretty. And I love the sort of realistic style of it. Um, yeah, it's just a really, I don't know, I just find it interesting and an interesting image and just very beautiful. So I think this is going to be a really lovely one to do and definitely one that's going to be staying in my collection for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite a special one. And then next up from Wentworth is another beautiful image. I mean, they have so many gorgeous puzzles. So this one is 284 pieces and it's called Ornamental Floral Fox and it's actually listed as extra difficult and that's because um so i'll just show you the image it's just beautiful this lovely fox again with lots of lovely line work and like lots of little swirling patterns and um like different plants and stuff in there and just trying to have a look yeah leaves and flowers and i love the colors as well even though it's not as bright and in your face and colorful as the other one it's just the colors are very autumny and just really lovely um, even though they're a bit more i guess darker or more moody but it's still quite a dramatic image but yeah just stunning and i love the eyes of the fox as well just beautiful anyway this one is a little bit different in terms of wooden pieces than the previous one and that's because it's sort of like a challenge puzzle so i believe the pieces are sort of made up of like different geometric shapes rather than irregular shapes and some shaped whimsy pieces it doesn't I don't think it has whimsy pieces it's just like all these sort of repetitive geometric geometric shapes that go together um, and yeah and then it ends up being a bit of a challenge puzzle so that's why they've listed it as extra difficult but I mean I got it more but just because I love the image I think it's really stunning and beautiful um, but yeah definitely looking forward to that one and then last from this pile is a Buffalo Games one. It's by the artist Amy Stewart and it's called My Awesome Collection 1989. It's 1000 pieces. And I just love this image. I might have to put a bigger one on the screen for you because it's there's a lot going on. It's very detailed. Um, but yeah, it's got lots of things that I love. So it's sort of like maybe a kid or a teenager's, yeah, probably a kid's like stationary sort of collection. And there's lots of erasers, like fun, um, like character erasers, there's stickers, pens, colorful, like colorful pens, pencil sharpeners. And this is actually quite nostalgic for me because growing up, 
I love, uh, even now I love collecting stationery and I have lots of different colorful pens and I even still have somewhere in a cupboard um, my collection of erasers that I had from uh, I think high school or primary school. Like I have all these little different colorful characters and things that I just collected. I'm a bit of a collector, <coughs> hoarder, collector. <laughs> But yeah, so that really brings back memories to me and I used to love collecting stickers and pens and things as well. And yeah, so I love all the details in this. Yeah, very nostalgic and yeah, really appeals to me. And I love the colors and the sort of like different little, yeah, kind of like, well, I guess 1989, 80s sort of things, or things that were popular imagery from, you know, I guess a kid's life in the, the late 80s. So. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's gonna be very fun and yeah, nostalgic to put together. Next, I've got a couple of puzzles from the brand Vizzles, which stands for Visual Puzzles. Um, and I got these off a recent Kickstarter for the wonderful Wizard of Oz puzzle, which I've got here. And the other one is one that I just, I didn't have, but I was able to add it to my order. Uh, anyway, these are all 1000 pieces and they're by the artist Samuel Milham, who creates all these like really fun, cute cartoony images so anyway anyway this one is the wonderful wizard of oz and i'll just show you that there it's not the whole image unfortunately there is like a sort of small reference picture on the inside um, but it, it's a bit tiny so if i can find a whole image i'll pop it on the screen um, but you get the idea of like that it's very cute and cartoony and lots of fun little details going on and yeah really like adorable things like little flowers with faces and uh yeah all sorts of like cute stuff um, but it's not just a puzzle so you put your cute adorable puzzle together and then there's an envelope included uh, which has lots of riddles and then when you solve the riddles you have to try and find the answer to the riddles somewhere in the puzzle so yeah it's a little bit more interactive than just a regular puzzle so yeah lots of uh, extra fun to be had with these and I actually did a video on the Neverland puzzle from the Vizzles range so I'll pop that in the cards above uh, or otherwise down below. Uh, yeah, so definitely check that out if you wanna know a bit more about these puzzles. But yeah, I think this one's gonna be really fun. And then the other one I got is actually all the way back from series one and it's called the Cozy Cinema. And again, same sort of thing where you uh, put together your fun image and then you have to solve the riddles and then find the answers somewhere in the image. So yeah, this one's like a uh, lots of interesting characters in the cinema and lots of funny things going on. Uh, yeah, so I think this one's going to be very interesting. I can already see some very funny, strange, quirky things happening in this image. So yeah, definitely interest, interested to see the whole image and figure out what all the riddles are. So I think that will be a lot of fun to do as well. And then I've got some puzzles here from Gallison. So I've got this really cute one called Plant World and it's 1000 pieces um, and I really love the quirky cute kind of line drawing or line drawn style is that what you'd call it oh, let's see if hopefully you can see it there's actually this is a fairly recent design and there's been a couple other designs by the same artist which is okay I'm probably going to mispronounce this Hai Jin Chung um, and yeah I really love the style it's just so interesting um, well, I love that it's all sort of house plants, um, but it's like, well, it is like it, the name suggests a plant world. So we've got all little people, tiny people everywhere living in like the pot plants of the plants or in the plants themselves. And there's like all sorts of people doing all different fun activities, playing the violin, riding a caterpillar, going to a cafe, um, <laughs> like swimming climbing like all sorts of stuff so yeah lots of little quirky details and there's like a lot going on here and yeah I really like the colors and yeah I really like this art style obviously I tend to like this sort of stylized like pen drawn art style because there seems to be a few puzzles in this collection here that have a very sort of similar look and feel um, but yeah I think this will be a really like nice one to do and then speaking of uh, mushrooms, like I mentioned before, I have quite a few mushroom puzzles in my collection and here's another one. So this one is from Gallison, it's called Foraged and it's called 1000, uh, sorry, it's 1000 pieces. And yeah, it looks like it's a photograph looking at it. So yeah, it's quite a lovely image. It's sort of 
uh, well, like the name suggests, all these mushrooms and bits of sort of, I guess, moss and things have been foraged and then sort of laid out for like a bit of a, you know, like into a bit of a bird's eye view photo. So yeah, it's just really nicely done. I really like the sort of soft kind of uh, minty gray kind of background color. It sort of gives a bit of a vintage feel and I just, yeah, love all the different colors and textures and sort of patterns on the mushrooms. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, and yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, they just look, yeah, really intriguing. There's something about mushrooms that I really like, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think this would be a really nice one to do as well. And then we've got a couple of 500 piece puzzles here from Gallison as well. I think, yeah, so this one is called Laundry Dogs and it's really cute. Um, it's like the name suggests as well. These dogs doing, well, I don't know if they're doing the laundry, trying to help, hanging out in the laundry, uh, getting up to mischief, maybe not being so helpful, but being very cute. So that's all that matters really. But yeah, they all just seem to be, I don't know, lounging around, getting up to some mischief, not being very helpful at all. Um, but yeah, just being adorable. So I think it's really cute and the style is very fun and adorable, kind of stylized as well, a little bit posterized. And uh, there's even like some sort of cute toy dogs. I noticed like in the actual washing machine, looks like there's a sort of plushy dog in there. So that's cute. And it's like a tiny little mini dog up there. And I guess whoever the owner is really loves dogs as well. So even though I am a cat person, I definitely make exceptions for dog puzzles when I think they're really nicely done and cute like this one. So yeah. And then I've got this very charming looking puzzle, also 500 pieces from Gallison called Beside the Sea. And I just love the color palette and this cute sort of vintage style. So it's really sweet. Um, it's got these like, it's a lovely sort of little seaside town maybe with a few little shops. And there's like lots of boats and a lighthouse and um, a little sort of street scene. I guess at the local cafe, you've got the tea by the sea, which looks very cute. Um, and there's like little picnic tables out the front and you can see a cute little dog and someone's having a picnic and looks like they're selling ice cream. But yeah, I love the colors. The color palette's very pretty and it's quite vintage with this sort of like, uh, like kind of retro, minty teal sea and it's lovely sort of peachy pinks and yeah i really like the style it's very cute and there's a lot of little details and yeah really pretty so i think this will be a really sweet very charming puzzle to do so last but certainly not least is this beautiful christmas advent calendar that was very kindly sent to me by pintu so this is called the star chaser christmas puzzle advent calendar and it's sort of done in the style of a old book and yeah it's a really lovely lovely illustrations and beautiful gold foiling and it's even got sort of like the pages of the book and then the spine and there's a little blurb on the back it says dear friends it's that time of year looking for a new looking for a unique way to count down pintu's christmas puzzle advent calendar is sure to delight discover new possibilities that come to life enjoy a one-of-a-kind puzzle experience free up your mind relax and enjoy so yeah cute little blurb on the back there and because it's a book of course it opens up to reveal some pages and yeah it's got these lovely sort of old-fashioned looking pages with all these pretty illustrations i don't know if this is too big for you to see on the screen um, if it's not showing up i'll put an image or some sort of video on there for you but yeah it's really nicely done um, and of course like a normal advent calendar there's a little sort of perforated square for each day from 1 to 24 and each one opens up to reveal like a little surprise inside and I should probably explain that Pintu uh, are a puzzle company that are known for doing plastic piece puzzles so I have quite a few and they're, they're really fun to put together they kind of snap together very satisfying and they also do some like sort of I guess you could say like household ornaments or objects they do like there's a range of vases and I think clocks that are all again made out of plastic puzzle pieces. So pretty cool. So I believe that some of the little items inside these uh, boxes are going to be little plastic puzzles to put together that maybe some make puzzles, maybe some make objects. Uh, you know, you might have to watch the video that I'm going to do later on and find out. Or uh, if you 
can't wait. You can actually get a bit of a spoiler online. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's really nicely done and there's also a bit of a story behind it. Like this is called the Star Chaser and it's sort of the stories about uh, the Pintu Kingdom, Magical Kingdom, which has a beautiful Christmas tree and it has a shining star on top, but the stars are unfortunately broken apart into pieces and you have to help find the pieces and restore it to its former glory. So yeah, it's kind of cool that there's like a bit of a story and a theme, it's quite nice. So yeah, I think this will be a really lovely, uh, yeah, Advent calendar activity to do during December. Um, but yeah, like I said, I am planning to do a video on this, probably either the end of this month or early December. I'm still sort of trying to think how to do it because obviously I want to unbox it and show off some of the little knickknacks that you get inside, but I also don't really want to wreck it for anyone, um, but that might be unavoidable. Um, so I guess if you've got any thoughts or suggestions, definitely pop them in the description, uh, not description box, the comments below, so I can uh, see what you think about, like see what your ideas are, or if you got any thoughts about it. Um, and like I said, there's there are spoilers online. They do have uh, an Amazon shop where you can still purchase these, and uh, it does actually show you some of the contents. So if you don't want to see it, maybe don't go have a look or don't look through the pictures on the Amazon page. Um, but yeah, speaking of the Amazon page, they do actually have uh, this with a 20% discount at the moment. Uh, I think that's ongoing throughout November. Um, it was going to stop in October, but they decided to extend it. So yeah, if you definitely, if you want to get a hold of one of these, um, I will pop an affiliated link that Pintu gave me in the description box below. So you can then go access the 20% off discount on their Amazon page. So yeah, definitely go check that out and grab yourself one of these lovely puzzles if you're into advent calendars. But yeah, otherwise stay tuned for my video um, a bit later this month or early next month. So that was everything for the month of September. Let me know in the comments which puzzles were your favorites. And also let me know what you think of this new format, whether you think it's working or if I should try something else. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.